So, good morning, class. Our first gas law to be discussed is Boyle's Law. By Robert Boyle. It states the relationship between volume and pressure of gases at constant temperature. It was stated by Robert Boyle during the 16th century. So, if you're going to take a look at your book, it says there, volume is directly proportional to 1 over P at constant. Or written V, volume, is equal to K over P. The latter equation is simply read as the product of pressure and volume is constant. So, if you're going to rewrite that uh, uh, formula, we can actually have... V1, P1 is equal to K. This is Boyle's law. Or we can also write V2, P2 is equal to K. Then, we can also write V1, P1 is equal to V2, P2. V1 here is actually the initial volume of uh, the gas at uh, initial pressure P1. While V2 is the final volume as there could have been or there could be changes in pressure P2. So see, uh, this formula actually tells us that there will be changes in the volume once there is also a change in the pressure of a certain gas. In using gas. the Boyle's law, it is also important that you know how to transform the formula. This V1, P1 is equal to V2, P2. Because what if in a problem, given P1, given V2, and given P2, how are you going to find for V1? So, you're just going to simply apply your uh, knowledge in math. V1, P1 on the left side. V2, P2 on the right side of the equation. You need to eliminate P1 here. So, how to eliminate it? Divide both sides by P1. So, this P1 here in the numerator will be cancelled out by the P1 here in the denominator. So, our formula for V1 becomes... V2, P2 over P1. So that is one formula that we got from the Boyle's Law. Another formula, what if you need to use uh, the formula for P1 or meaning in a problem, you're looking for P1. P1 is unknown. So again, you have to transform the formula. V1, P1 is equal to V2, P2. We eliminate V1 this time on the left side of the equation by dividing both sides with V1. So this one will be cancelled out. So obviously your P1 can be found by using the formula V2 times P2 over V1. Okay, so we're done looking for or transforming the formula so that we can look for V1 or P1 in case it is asking the problem. This time, going back to our uh, starting formula, V1, P1 is equal to V2, P2. Let's say you're looking for V2. So, we need to eliminate P2 on this side. Divide both sides by P2. So, this now will be cancelled out. Hence, our formula for V2 will be V1, P1 over P2. Now, it's just the same by rewriting it. If you want to write V2 on the left side, just copy it exactly as it is. Then, just transfer this whole uh, quantity on the right side. So, it's just the same. Okay, so this one and this one are just the same. Time if you're looking for uh, P2, write again the Boyle's law. 
So this time, since we're looking for the formula for P2, we eliminate V2 on this side. So this will be cancelled out. So our formula for P2 will be V1, P1 over V2. Or we can also reverse it. Just transfer P2 on the left side. And then completely transfer this one on the right side. V1, P1 over V2. So there you have it. We actually have four formulas coming from the Boyle's Law. V1, P1 is equal to V2, P2. So these are the four formulas that we derived a while ago. V1 is equal to V2, P2 over P1. P1 is equal to V2, P2 over V1. V2 is equal to P1, V1 over P2. And P2 is equal to V1, P1 over V2. So, found in your book is the sample problem. Let's read it. The inflated balloon that slipped from the hand of Ren has a volume of 0 0.50 liter at sea level. And it reached a height of approximately 8 kilometer, where the atmospheric pressure is approximately 0 0.33 atmosphere. Assuming that the temperature is constant, compute for the final volume of the balloon. So what are given in your problem? You have V1, which is 0 0.50 liter at pressure 1 atmosphere. And then, there was a change in the pressure. From 1 atmosphere, it became 0 0.33 atmosphere. So, obviously, it decreased in, in value. Now, what happens to the volume of the balloon? So, in this problem, you're obviously looking for V2. Or the final volume of the balloon after the pressure decreased from 1 atmosphere to 0 0.33 atmosphere. So let's solve the problem. So you are given V1 is equal to 0 0.50 liter. P1 is 1 atmosphere. V2 is unknown. After the P2 decreased to 0 0.33 atmosphere. So, since the units in the pressure are the same, there's no need for us to convert it to make them the same because they are already the same. They are both expressed in atmosphere. The volume, first volume, is in liters. So, meaning the volume of the balloon after the pressure decreased may also be expressed in liter value. So, what formula or which among these four formulas will be used? So we're going to use this one. So let's solve. V2 is equal to V1. P1 over P2. So just uh, substitute the values. 0 0.50 liters times P1, 1 atmosphere divided by P2, 0 0.33 atmosphere. What happens to this unit? They will be cancelled out. They cancel out each other. So the remaining unit is in liter. Hence, that will also be our unit for our final volume or V2. So 0 0.50 times 1 is 0 0.50 divided by 0 0.33 our final answer after calculating it down, you have 1.5 liter. Hence, the logic as given in your book that as the volume of a fixed amount of gas increases, the pressure will actually decrease in its value. Boyle's Law actually helps us understand the phenomenon behind respiration. So in your grade 9 lesson, if you remember, you made a model 
a long model to explain the respiratory system. I hope you still remember that. So as you uh, pull the balloon, which represents the diaphragm, it also tells you that your lungs expand. So explaining it with Boyle's law, pulling the rubber balloon represents inhaling. And when you inhale, the lung cavity expands, causing the pressure inside the lungs to decrease and become lower than the outside pressure. As a result, air flows from the higher pressure area, which is outside the body, into the lungs. Exhaling in the opposite process, when you release the rubber, which represents the diaphragm, the balloon represents the lungs decreasing in volume. This phenomenon happens during exhaling. When the diaphragm contracts as you exhale, it results to a decrease in the lung volume, increasing the pressure inside the chest cavity, and causing air to flow out of the lungs. So, for you to recall it, try to breathe in and out, and uh, mindfully observe what happens to your lungs. So, inhaling and exhaling, or this process of respiration, is being explained actually by Boyle's Law.